Hey guys, Brad with Bradley Performance Products again here with you. Trying to just take a minute to think about some of the questions and discussions that I get from some of you guys and I wanted to address some of those things if it's possible. I think we'll do a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live or something to be able to answer some of the questions from you guys. I think we'll schedule that in the near future. So this discussion for those of you that don't know, and some of you may be more, high, more highly educated about um, engine blueprinting than I am. So, but for those of you that aren't as familiar with the way these high performance parts interact with one another. So I get questions all the time, uh, you know, can I take my stock TW and put a big cam in it or put a big carburetor on it? And how do these parts interact with one another? And the answer is not good. And can you install a big carb or a big cam on a stock motor? Yes. Do you stand to gain anything? Not at all. You will probably lose a considerable amount of power, to be honest with you. Your engine is currently in you know, almost perfect tune. Everything is designed to work uh, together in sync. Uh, the right amount of cam lift, the right amount of compression, the exact ratio of bore to stroke, uh, the exact carburetor size, everything, you know, obviously Yamaha did their homework. So as we start modifying things, all of a sudden you've got uh, a component that is out of sync with everything else. And that's why you, you generally want to do all of these modifications together. And so as we go to a bigger bore, that means that you are increasing the volume of the engine, which is the, the volume of air that it pumps in and out, is greater now. Uh, I get a lot of questions about jetting once you go to the big bore. A lot of you buy just the big bore only, and of course that's perfectly fine. You stand to gain a little torque from, from doing that. But as you go to a, um, a bigger bore, and everything else being the same, your carburetor being your, uh, your orifice, basically, the engine now is now pumping more air and more volume through the same size orifice and it has the ability to now draw more fuel through the same size jets and so most people think that when they go to the big bore that they need to jet up it's not true it's the opposite once you go to just a big bore cylinder it will draw more fuel through the jets and your bike now becomes rich and your mixture becomes very rich and it runs worse we have found that you need to lean considerably in the mid-range and upper circuits of the stock carburetor if that's what you're running. Uh, we've, we've gone down from like a stock 128, I think down to maybe a 118. Um, and I think we've also pulled uh, the plastic spacer out from under the needle and gone to just a washer. But regardless, you will need to lean your jetting if you're just going to a larger bore only because it will go rich. On that note, it's probably a good time to introduce our new line of camshafts. You can visibly see we have two new cams now. We have, uh, this is more of a stock style cam, aftermarket stock cam. This is our mid-range cam and this is our big cam, high RPM cam. And if you look down the center line here, you can see the, sh the shape and the profile and the height of this lobe, which is stock. And then compared to our mid-range cam, the lobe is not that much taller. We don't increase lift all that much, but you can see the how different the profile is. And we're obviously holding the valves open longer and increasing duration. And then, let me see if I can hold all three of these. On our biggest cam, you can see how big and, and, and wide that lobe is and how much we have increased duration uh, and lift on the big cam. And it's holding the valves open a whole lot longer. So we have um, greater cylinder filling, obviously. You can get in more air, more fuel, and more out with a bigger cam. And so uh, we have those now, and they're at a uh, introductory price. I think we got them on sale on there for, for now. So anyway, um, that being said, your stock carburetor operates off engine vacuum. It is a vacuum style, CV style carburetor. And so it operates off of engine vacuum. 
going to a bigger camshaft than stock decreases engine vacuum. Anytime you go to a bigger cam, you have less vacuum. And so now what happens, as you can guess? We have less engine vacuum to operate the CV style carburetor, so it does not like it at all. I've done a lot of tuning and testing and modifying uh, for um, all the engine mods and a bigger cam with the stock carb, and it doesn't like it at all. It just does, it no longer produces enough vacuum to operate that stock carb. I would not recommend it, although some, some of you may figure out how to make it work. Uh, we don't like it. So that's why we recommend going to a, um, our FCR or a pumper carb of some kind. Uh, the FCR doesn't uh, require engine vacuum to open and close the slide. It's an all mechanical carburetor with a um, accelerator pump and it is just a much higher performing carburetor and it is much larger. You have a 28 millimeter stock carb compared to a 33 millimeter FCR. So we're moving more air and more fuel in. We are allowing the engine to take in more air and more fuel with a bigger cam. We have a larger displacement and higher volume with the bigger bore. That leads me to a couple other uh, points of discussion. If you hold the valves open longer with a bigger cam, you naturally, due to valve overlap, you naturally have a loss of compression. Because the valves are open longer, uh, there is, uh, they are still open slightly um, when the piston is on its way back up and you have a loss, a natural loss of compression. So, what do you do about that? Boost compression with a higher compression uh, piston. So this is not a good example because this is like a stock uh, 70 millimeter ATV piston, like for a Timberwolf or something. But you can see that they're dished, um, and that's pretty common on this bore size, on like a 70 millimeter or 71 millimeter. But uh, here is a used uh, pullout uh, Wiseco uh, in a 70 millimeter for our big bores, and you can see that. It actually has, I think, a four, four and a half, five millimeter dome, or sorry, uh, not millimeter, four, four, four and a half or five cc uh, dome on top versus a dish. And so that's how you get the compression back after the compression loss from going to a big can. You got to get it back somehow, and you do that with the piston or through machining of the head or machining of the cylinder and, and uh, increasing uh, decking the surfaces and increasing, increasing uh, combustion. Last but not least, we're experimenting with a lot of the other um, heads that fit a TW. So, more specifically like the ATV heads, like for the Timberwolves and uh, the old three-wheelers and things like that. Here's a good example. Um, so, uh, let me find a tight spot. Yeah, so right there, that's the tightest, the tightest spot um, in a stock TW intake runner. And if I put the same tool into the ATV head, you can see the movement up and down without giving you exact measurements. The runners are larger on the ATV heads. So these make, um, higher flowing heads and uh, they match well with the bigger bore and a bigger cam and higher compression and bigger carburetor and um, all these things that we do. So anyway, if I hope that helps you understand for those of you that don't know um, why it doesn't work just to add one of these components. I realize that's the cheapest way to go. It's just, you know, I wish there was a magic bullet, you know, just buy a cam and drop a cam in there and it's, it's, it's fixed, you know, it's fast. Uh, it's not the case. It takes all of it. It takes more volume and then squeeze it tighter with higher compression, better cylinder filling, uh, bigger runners, bigger cams, um, bigger carburetors. And so um, anyway, that's why all of these things have to work together and uh, keep it in tune so that we get better performance out of it. As you just drop one of these things on your stock TW motor, you lost power, you lose performance.
So anyway, I hope that answers some of your questions, it shows you some of the stuff that we're working on. And again, I really, as always, really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your, your business, your support. And send me, um, uh, I think we will do a, a, a live video or something. So uh, be prepared for that and, and get some questions uh, ready for me. I wanna make sure that we can answer everybody's questions. Uh, that you might have. Appreciate those of you that reach out to me. I love talking to you all the time. You know, we, we do answer the phone uh, when we're not in the shop. And I love talking to you guys from all over the world, actually. Uh, we get a lot of calls from Australia and, and Canada and Europe and, and uh, all over. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, it means a lot to me. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks again.